Welcome to the Lancashire Lad podcast. This week's episode is sponsored by Jason Dring, building and landscaping. Beautiful pass inside. Here now he's got Edmondson. Can Edmondson go all the way? He's got Paul Edmondson outside him, but he doesn't need it. Oh, terrific pace there from the prop forward, Mark Edmondson. Watching this uh, this game. The ball here with St. Owen and Brady Anderson again going down. A pack which is probably a couple of stone a man different. There is Wilkin. Oh, and he goes in. But he's hat trick. He puts three. Are you going live? Yeah, we're live now, mate. We're live and going. So, um, <clears throat> So, welcome everybody to the Lancashire Lad podcast. This is episode three, and what a treat we've got for you today. Um, we've had a great start so far, so thank you for all the, uh, the support and well wishes and thumbs up and subscribers. And today we raise the bar a little bit as we introduce to you one of Morecambe's legends. It is Mark Edmo Edmondson, who played for St. Helens, Sydney Roosters, and of course, England for Rugby League. So, how are you, Mark? How's things over there? Because tell us where you're at today, by the way, because our viewers won't know. Well, um, I'm living in uh, the Gold Coast in Australia, and uh, the suburb where I live is called Surface Paradise. And if you Google it, you'll be blown away. It's just endless miles of beaches. Uh, it, it's like it's like a Las Vegas, but on the beach. Um, right. Th- there's there's hundreds of thousands of people travelling from all over the world to holiday here. So um, I live in a, a resort which like you see on the American shows and stuff like that, where you live in a hotel with swimming pools and, you know, people at the door taking your luggage up. I live in one of them places. Um, yeah, life's, life's pretty great here. Well, yeah, you've, you've really lifted my morale this morning, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in more coming it's been drizzling. Yeah, it's been drizzling. Uh, but fantastic. Listen, thank you for joining us on Lancaster Lab podcast. Um, let's get straight into it. So talk to me about uh, growing up in Hesham um, and... How you got into rugby league? That's a good one. Um, uh, fond memories of growing up in Heesham. Single parent with my mother. Um, got a well-known family, the Edmondsons, from around the place. As, as uh, you know, people be listening yeah. might know. Um, also, a really popular name on the other side of the family. Um, but uh, yeah, really fond memories. Went to uh, St Peter's in Heesham Village. Brilliant time there. Went to Morecambe High. Loved it. Fell into rugby at the age of eleven. Um, became obsessed, became absolutely obsessed. One, one day, my uh, teacher, Mr. Armistead, um, he said to me, what's your plans when you leave school? And I had no clue. And he says, well, if, you, if you're really serious, I think you can make it at this rugby. And I'm like, really? Wow. Like, yeah, he said, but you're going to have to follow my regime, which was before I got the bus to school from Eastern to Morecambe, I, I'd have to run 2K time trial every morning and time it and get better and better and better. When it come to lunchtime, when we had a spare hour, instead of nipping off and having a cig or a joint, <laughs> got, you know, with the boys on the prom, yeah, I, had, yeah. I, had to, I had to bring me sandwiches and go to the gym and do 30 minutes in the gym lifting weights. And then after school, I would um, I'd train for Morecambe High. And then after that, I'd jump on my bike and I'd go to Vendler and I'd train. And then at the weekend, I would play Saturday for school and then I'd play Sunday for Vale of Loon. And so- um, yeah. I was just going to say, um, when you're playing for school, because when I was at school, you only had an option to play rugby union. There was no sort of rugby league at, uh, in any high school I know. So was that the same for you? It started off as rugby union and then it developed into the other code? Yeah. Um, so my uh, visions and dreams were to play for England at Twickenham, rugby union. God right. save the frigging queen and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I can remember being in my... Hands around all your rugby, yeah. Oh, well, in, in my bedroom, watching the internationals, you know, when I could and singing, like pretending, visualising I was there. And then I'd go out yeah. into the garden with a rugby ball and practice. But uh, long story short, um, I got selected for Lancashire at the under 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s. And then when it got to 16s, then it was international progression. So I got selected for North of England. And then I went for the England trials, schools and clubs and never made it. Right. Um, and I told everyone at school, I'm going to be a professional by the time I leave school. And it was getting to the end of leaving school. And everyone's going, 
you're full of shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're full of shit, bro. Where is it? And we then, knew you'd never I'm, do it. I'm telling you, three months before, three months before I left school, to I don't know where I was going. Uh, I only had one plan, and that was to play professional. I got a phone call, and like this is this is the difference. So. Um, during the 1996 era, Super League was born. Yeah, and, I remember and, it well. And Wigan, Wigan and St. Ellen's were on TV, and I'm just like, what is this rugby league? It's, yeah. And Martin O'Fire, Jason Robinson, Andy Farrell, and I'm like, Ugh, like I could have just <laughs> died. Yeah. And um, I was fantasising about that. Um, I got rid of a lot of my friends and just went into a, a recluse. Um, it was just that training regime. And into like a, your own then. cocoon and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, no, no one taught me. It was just natural. And, right. and now to this day, this is one of the first things I teach people. Just lock yourself in your bubble like a Conor McGregor. Just, I'm going to yeah. do it. I'm working hard and there's no wavering in belief. So um, got a phone call and one level above Vale of Loon first team was a team called St. Helens at Liverpool St. Helens. And the crap, oh shit, in case anyone's listening. <laughs> and they weren't, they, they weren't anything special. They're just, you know, yeah. a couple of what, leagues above. And this guy's on the phone. He says, Mark, we've been watching you. And we think um, you'd be great to come down to our club in a trial. And I'm like, where are you from? And he went to St. Ellen's. And I went, uh, to be honest, it's a long distance to travel. <laughs> um, and, yeah. you know, you're only a little bit above the Vale of Loon. And I've been told to stay on at the Vale of Loon. And he's like, who with the Veil vale of Loon? And I'm like, what? <laughs> it, just, it just sounded a bit weird, that, that team name, didn't it? The Veil vale yeah. of Loon. <laughs> he goes, what are you talking about? And yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, we are St. Helens Rugby League. Yeah. And I'm like, not them on the TV that's just won the Super League and the Challenge Cup. And he goes, yes. And I'm, uh, honest to God, it was, it was a moment oh, like, I, time, yeah. time, time, I was speaking to the selector one of the head scouts, which was Paul Paul Wellen's dad. Paul right. Wellen's is a legend. Yeah, 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 and yeah. His dad, and, and I, nearly, I nearly dropped, and I ran wow. out of school. And I left school in that moment. So gathered up my parents, gathered up money, travel, uh, booked booked um, the time to come down. I had grueling tests for a week: fitness test, strength test, agility test, skill test. Um, they taught me the game as much as possible, and then they put me in for a trial, and the rest is history. What was that's how I got into league? Yeah, right, <coughs> fantastic. So, what was it like when you first? Because basically, that leads me on to obviously my next stage, which is obviously St. Helens. Um, 1999 was it you joined? I think you were 17 years no, no, of no. age. Yeah, 97 I joined as an academy. Right. Oh, okay. all right, okay. So it's 1999 when you made your debut, was it? Full debut, debut for the first, yeah, right. I've got you, yeah, fantastic. So, when you first got there, what. Because obviously some sports can show you tough love when you first arrive as, you, as a youngster. So what I mean by that is that the seniors can make life difficult for youngsters coming through just to test the metal. Was it a bit like that at St. Ellen's or were you welcomed and supported right from the word go? It was a nightmare. <laughs> I thought it might be. That's why I wanted to ask the question. Absolute. All right. So if you, if you go further south from us, I mean, it's still north. But there's, there's something weird in the water with Manchester, Liverpool. St. Ellen's, Wigan, Warrington, Witness. Yeah. There's something not right about them. And the very, you know, um, old school, like from the coal mines, their, their, their heritage is from the coal yeah. mines, like really tough, fast fucking people. And so are we, <laughs> I suppose. But yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. lived in luxury a little bit in the olden days on, in Norcombe. But um, when I went down there, I was known as the posh, posh, me fucking posh. <laughs> and I was known, I was... I was known as the posh rugby union player and they hated me. I was, oh, I right. was ex exiled, distant, no one would help me. Really? All down to me. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Uh, bullied. Um, and this was in the academy, never mind the first team. Right, okay. And I, I signed a four year contract when I was 17 after the three trials and I played brilliant. And I played brilliant by fluke because all I did was watch rugby league and, and copied what they did. And yeah. then with my athleticism and my, my desire, um, I impressed, so they signed me. But what a horrible, horrible first year it was. Um, yeah, it's a bit the, like the Hell Week. That, yeah. A bit like Hell Week with the, the Navy SEALs in Florida. <laughs> that that hey, Hell Week where it's designed to get rid yeah. of you. Yeah, it was designed to get rid of me. <laughs> and um, there was only three months left of a nine-month season, and I wasn't selected. Right, and okay. They do a review at the end of the year, and if you did play, you get booted out. It doesn't matter what your contract was. Right. Um, 
so yeah, I was I was outcasted, bullied, uh, labelled, judged, um, and 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 talk about spirit and fighting for everything you got. I was crying yeah. my eyes out every nearly every day, crying my eyes out. Were you wanting to quit? Dream, never. You never felt never. like so you were crying, but you in your head you were like, it's hurting like hell this, but I ain't walking away. It was yeah. like that sort of attitude. Um, I don't know where it come from within me, but I had a wave. Yeah. I, I never wavered in my belief. It was always. I've visualised from such a long time and fantasised and daydreamed and sent the wishes out to the stars. And yeah. I, it was just, all right, this is an obstacle. Somehow I'm going to get over it. And that's where a mentor came into my life and saved me and turned me into the psychologist that I am today. Sports right, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, that's, it led me to a mentor that saved me in that last three months of the season. And, oh, my God, shit happened. And who like was the magic. mentor? You won't know him. Um, he was a strength and conditioning coach in his 50s, an ex-bodybuilding universe champion, big, <laughs> big, big grey-haired man. Right. And um, he caught me crying in my car. And when you go into a club like St. Ellen's, these kids have been in the system since six years of age. Right, got you. Right, and then they turn professional at 11, right? Yeah. So they've got all the gear on. Oh, oh what was another thing was, when you're a, a real professional at St. Ellen's, you get all the kit when you're a kid, 17. Right. But when you're on a trialy and you're sort of not there, you don't get the kit. And they're walking around like they've made it. Yeah, and they play yeah. well at the weekend and I'm not picked and I'm watching them. And then I go away and cry. I've not been picked again, mum. I've not been picked again, mum. I've not been picked again. Um, and I'm training more than them. They would fuck around in training because they're already good. I'm learning everything. So I'm staying later. I'm the first one to arrive, crying, losing my shit. Yeah, and then this wonderful man... Uh, came into my life and he sat me down and he says, look, uh, do you have a father figure in your life? I'm like, why are you asking me that? He says, look, I'm just asking you a question. I said, no. And he says, do you want one? Wow. I'm like, not, not really, but I Talk mean, about being put on the spot. Be good. <laughs> yeah. And, being and put on the spot with a... Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I did want a, a, a you know, father figure like that, but um, yeah, more yeah. of a mentor. So um, this lovely man, told me about what, what's your vision. He told me how to create a vision in my mind. And I said, I just want to be a professional. And then he basically said to me, that's really vague. The, the, he said to me things that I know now. He said, the universe will give you whatever you want, but you've got to be really specific. And then you've got to memorize it. And I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. So he sent me away. He said, write down your dream on paper and come read it back to me. So I wrote down, um, I want to play on TV, play for England, win championships, be a part of a crazy era with yeah, this yeah. club, um, be paid lots of money, buy houses, be a role model, drive sports cars, uh, be happy, uh, all that. And he's like, great. Now, read it every day for three months. And I'm like, why is that? And he says, so you don't never forget it. And then eventually, it's in your soul. And then every day, you'll be going after it. So I'm like, brilliant. So there was the vision. Then, he, then it was about looking at my lifestyle and setting goals. Yeah. And then he gave me an, an audio tape, which was hypnosis, very similar <laughs> to what Mike Tyson Right, okay. Um, I didn't expect Custom to hear Arto. that. Custom Arto was a psychologist plus a boxing trainer. Yeah. And he gave him um, a pre-recorded tape that he made saying, you are the world's most destructive human being. And it, and it played in Mike Tyson's ears like this every night on a cassette yeah. tape. And eventually you become it. Mm. Um, and then the miracles started to happen. After wow. It's, cra it's crazy how just like one influence in your life can suddenly... You know, you, you're trying to get on the straight and narrow yourself, but you, you're going a bit skew if, and then someone could come along and make things look so simple where you, yeah. you re engage yourself and go, oh, yeah, you know, and then you start going down that road that you're supposed to be on in the first place. But it sounds to me like, you know, you, you, got, you got to where you wanted because you paid your dues as well. You know, you, you took the hits and you paid your dues to get there. And I think there's nothing more admirable than that in a sportsman. Uh, you know, I think paying your dues to get where you get, you know, is, is something that's very underrated. Uh, it's fascinating to hear that. So going into the St. Helens era then, I mean, what people might not know is that when you played for St. Helens, it's arguably the most dominant era ever, of, the, ever. of the club's history. And they were founded in, what was it, 1873? Yeah. I mean, that is crazy that you were there I know. I in that out. period where it was, I mean, some of the players, you know, Paul Sculthorpe, Kieran Cunningham, Sean Long especially. You know what I mean? Jamie, it, Jamie, Jamie Lyon, Lydia. Yeah. Oh, there's there so many. 
it's, you know, and to be, you know, even when you're sat in Australia now on a morning and stuff and you're having your morning coffee and looking out and you must think sometimes I, w- I was part of the most dominant era by arguably one of the greatest rugby league clubs in England. That must yeah. feel good. That must feel good, mate. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a dampener on what you're saying. Unfortunately, I developed a complex. Um, when you're not surrounded by the right people, I'm, I'm talking after my career. Yeah. People that have never achieved or can ever fathom what you've been saying to them. Yeah. They turn it around on you and call you a narcissist. Yeah. Or an yeah. egotistical prick or, mm. you know, um, other words. And I literally had to stop. Even when people asked me, what do you do? It was only when people asked me, I'd say, I played for St. Helens. And they're like, what? The real St. Helens are like, yeah. <laughs> the f- what? The, the second grade? I'm like, no, top grade. Uh, how many games? About 150. What? And they don't, yeah. they, they don't believe. And it, and, it, and it turned out for many, many years that I just had to stop. And yeah. do you know what? I, I could sit at a table and no one would ask me anything about myself and I would never tell them. And it, and it became a complex. And I'm really embarrassed to say that I played in the greatest era. I won six trophies, all, yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. all the trophies apart from a World Cup, played for England. And then I come over to Australia and played for the Manchester United. To this day, they're the, the greatest team, Sydney Roosters. And I played with the best and against the best. Yeah, I was, I was going to just touch on that with obviously... After, you know, with St. Helens and stuff, when things started flying for you, obviously England came knocking. Um, mm. what, 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 what did that mean? Because no matter what sport you do, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, your main, your main aim is to represent your country. Surely to good God, that's how every sportsman should be. So when that, yeah. when that knock on the door came for you, was there, a, was there a moment you had to yourself where you thought, wow, you know, this means the world to me? Yeah. Yeah, um, when I was 21, I got I got selected for England. Um, I just remember being at home with my girlfriend at the time, and I got a letter through the post. Yeah, and she come up screaming. What? She opened it. She, of course, I, wanted to, <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't face it. All oh, right, I've got yeah. I thought she'd just gone through your post. I couldn't fucking face it. And I'm lying <laughs> in bed, and it, it was again another surreal moment. And I went yeah. on a tour to South Africa with some of the greatest players. I mean, still just about retiring now. Best players in England. Rob Burrow, I mean, poor little thing. I played with Rob Burrow. Yeah. And, you know, you know, he's 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 got that, you know, life. Yeah, I, wa- I, watched the, I watched a documentary the other day on it actually. And uh yeah. yeah, I mean, I can't believe anyone can be so brave in that sort of adversity. But that mm. I mean, it wound me up, Mark, to be fair, because people like that to kill me, me mate. Yeah, people like that for me, they're more worthy of Sports Personality of the Year award sometimes yeah, for me than people actually achieve something that year. You know, and I know yeah, it's different, but yeah, yeah. what he's done is, he, is, is incredible. I, 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 I can't be accurate, but that guy took so many knocks to the head. I don't know. Yeah. So many knocks to the head. I've run over the top of him, stood on his head, and right. God knows the biggest guys, you know, running through him. But it, what a wonder. Anyway. He was, he's wonderful, and I played yeah. with him and many others. Um, we played two tests, I think it was, in South Africa, and um, I sang the national anthem. What was that and like, by the way? Well, I went back to when I was a child singing at Twickenham in my you, bedroom. Did you, belt, did you belt it out? Of course I did. Yeah. Of course it, I did. Yeah. Because that, that's what out. winds me up yeah. when they don't do that. Oh, it winds me up it. when footballers don't do it, and yeah, but yeah. the rugby lads are like, God, yeah. that's what but I no, love. No one could understand us because we're all northern. <laughs> Good, uh, you know what I mean? It's a bit different with a with a rugby union. They're all posh voices. Um, yeah. And I played so well. Um, I came away with the man of the tour. So wow. I got a trophy. I got a trophy, man of the tour, and that propelled me to believe in because at that time I was just about making it in the first team, but I could have been fucked off any time. Yeah. And that gave me the confidence. I went on to play for many more England games, etc. Brilliant. Fantastic. So obviously this is an interesting uh, part that I want to know about. Obviously, um, after your career with St. Helens, that, like I said, was, you know, it's, it'll stand the test of time, that 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 period. Um, Sydney, Sydney Roosters, how did that come about? I bet, was that a surprise? Or were you at that point in your life, were you like, no, I'm good at this? And no, uh, you weren't no. surprised by the call, or were you surprised? My mum... Um... 
when I was 22. So I went to Sydney when I was 26. Right, okay. She, she, she got some tea leaves in a cup and she went, <laughs> the, cup, the cup says you've got to live in Australia for the rest of your life. Wow. And I'm like, my mum's a bit like that. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking weirdo, shut up. Anyway, ignored it, but never forgot it. So um, I scored three tries in 25 minutes against Wigan in the quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup. Yeah, you did, yes. Because I'm a Wigan fan and I remember. Right. <laughs> and it was, it, it was effortless. It was, it was effortless. Um, the coach at the time had just replaced Ian Millwood, the famous coach, you know, in that era. And he wasn't putting me as a starting number 10. And that right. really pissed me off. And he put James Graham, this young kid who's now the world's greatest, um, in my position. So when I got 25 minutes left of the second half, I'm like, I'm going to show you, you fucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's but, all right, um, don't worry. I, I, I scored three tries. That was a pinnacle of my career. And then, again, the universe, there was a selector from the Sydney Roosters looking for a different type of prop forward to replace yeah. um, this big guy that they'd lost. He's called Jason Kalers. And um, I got a phone call, and it's an Australian number, Australian voice. Edmo, and I'm like, yeah, good night, mate. We had, yeah, good night, mate. And I'm like, I'm at the time. A lot of the Australians were playing a lot of pranks on us. You know, right, Sean okay. Long was joining in as well. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, what, what, what? And they're like, uh, look, we've got your two year deal at um, the, the Sydney Roosters, and we just played the Sydney Roosters in a 2003 uh, World Club Challenge, which is they're the champions, we're the champions. Yeah. Let's have a crack, and they smashed us. And I that day played against them, thinking. Who are these? They're like gods. <laughs> Who are these people? Years, they were just, <laughs> oh, they, were, they were like bodybuilders, sprinters, fastest people in the world, best skilled. We were nothing. We were fat. Yeah. We were slow. Yeah. And two years later, I get a phone call and I went, piss off. I went, seriously, <laughs> piss off. Put the phone down. Yeah. And it rang back. And this agent from Australia said, listen, if you put the phone down on us again, you, you'll, you'll miss out. You have 24 hours to decide the contract You've got three months to book your flights and get out here for pre-season. Wow. Did you know in that one minute or not? Fucking right, I did. Mum! <laughs> mum! You're right, Mum, you're right. <laughs> mum, what shall I do? She's like, go! Not looking into go. a teacup again. Is it? Yeah. Def- yeah. <laughs> yeah, Australia. <laughs> yeah, tell you. Oh, that's good. Do you know something? I love stories like that because it's just like, I, I guess with your mum saying that and then that phone call, it... You've got your mind made up there, haven't you? Because it's like this is too, yeah. this is too like right to yeah. be wrong. Yeah. So, and guess what? And guess what? The t- sorry, at the on. time, I'd just been selected for England again. So this is like right. three years on the bounce, but this is in the Tri Nations. And also, I've been offered a three-year extension contract that was going to set me up for life at St. Helens, yeah. like for life. I'd had three right. properties. I was going to buy. I was going to buy more, and I had to just give it all up and go. I, I do that a lot. I just give everything up, jump on a boat playing whatever I'm off I'll, off I go. So I went. Oh sorry I thought, I thought you were yeah, going on. That's it. Right. So, so I, went. So, I went bump. Um sorry mate, I that's didn't it. pick up on that. No, that's fantastic. Do you think you do that by the way, just quickly, do you think you the reason you drop things now and again and, and do you think you like because I know a lot of people are the same. Do you like starting from the bottom a lot of the time? So do you, when you build something up and you're doing really well, sometimes do you like I've done that now. I do something else, and you like that journey of going whoop, doo, 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 or not. If I like it, yeah, then I'll continue it for the rest of my life. But you get to a certain point, which I'll talk to you about coaching England. Well, yeah, assistant yeah. coaching England. Um, no, I, I, I know what I want. Yeah, and if it gets to a stage where the dream wasn't what I want, I'm out. Right. Okay. I've got you. So there's, I, I'm there's not, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not wasting my time with anyone with anything. Yeah, it, it's really good. Do you think that has to walk hand in hand with patience, though, or not? Um, do you think sometimes maybe in life a lot of people want things instantly and they're not willing to to give yeah. it the right amount of time to fru- come to fruition? Or that's, that's you- not my po- yeah, that's not my point. Um, anything that's lifelong right, sorry, rewarding mate. takes so much sacrifice and so yeah, much yeah, patience. Yeah. I've got business clients at the moment, they're like, I want it now. And I'm like, anything that's <laughs> worthy of lifelong, yeah, which I can relate to, this St. Ellen's thing is in my heart forever. No yeah. one can take it away from me. Sing the national anthem, blah, blah, blah. But um, if you want the greatest body, the greatest health, it's a massive, massive sacrifice and patience is required. And mm. the hard work and the lonely times, uh, it, there's the equation. Anyone that wants something quick, whatever. I mean, you see it when people win the lottery. Something yeah. really quick happened and blow it up. But um, 
No, uh, it's, that's not my point. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, my I, point, yeah. yeah it, uh, my point is, um, if you get to the dream and you find out it's still not the dream, then don't waste any more time staying there. Right, I've got, I get what you mean now. Sorry. Because yeah, with, within every dream, within every dream, there's there's people, and they might not be congruent with your dreams. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I get I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Um, okay. So obviously, when you arrived at Sydney, um, this this brings me to my sort of next question and stuff. Um, I don't. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know exactly what happened, but it's around this time where injuries started to affect your career. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I tried to have a read up on it, um, you know, but I couldn't really find enough information out about it to Too be long accurate. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, because it's going to lead me to another point in a minute. But before we get to that point, what, um, what, what started to go wrong with the injuries? What was it that started to affect you? That that. Com- to be honest, let's be honest. That literally robbed you of so much game time. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah and years, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I signed the contract, playing the best rugby, coming into my prime, 26. Maybe the next two years would have been my prime, leading into my 30s. Yeah. Um, I found my confidence where I can compete against anyone in the world and hold me on for a little Haitian lad, Lancashire lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lancashire um, lad. Well done, mate. Well done. The Lancashire lad. <laughs> Fucking, let's drop that one in there. Uh, I, lo- I love your concept, by the way. I love, ah. I love the picture. I love the art. Um, ah, thank you, mate. Cheers. Stick to that. I said to you the other night, you're natural. So, um, oh, uh, do you know, one, one, one thing I've found, um, I'll go off the topic, I'll come back to it. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Being authentic, being real, never wavering from that. I say wavering again, just stick to you. Yeah. Um, being a Lancashire lad, do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> and, and I see so many fakes in the industry and it just hurts me so much. Um, right. Just for you. That's, that's why I swear if I ever lecture, I swear. I curse, I do whatever I want, I just be me. I tell yeah. stories that I shouldn't tell. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Just 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 be you. So um, what was your what was your uh, last question? Going to uh, it was, uh, uh, the to, yeah, I wanted to know what the exact injuries were and and how they came about, you think, in your opinion. Yep. Uh, signed the contract three months roughly uh, to go at the end of the St. Helens season. Um, I told the CEO of St. Helens, Amy McManus, um, lovely man, supported me for 12, 12 years or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I said, I've got a dream and I'm not going to sign the contract. And he says, I wouldn't want you to do anything different. Go for it, lad. So he, he, he gave me his blessing. Um, but then the coach said, look, don't be fucking St. Helens off now. Just because you're going, like play your heart out. So I played my heart out too much and I'm whacking everyone. And yeah. I, I I got nerve damage on this shoulder where I had... Uh, I was paralysed. I was paralysed with my nerves from the right, elbow okay. and the shoulder down. Um, and then in another game, I dislocated my shoulder. I needed a shoulder reconstruction. And I went to the surgeon and I had two broken shoulders. Oh, um, one, one would heal in time and one needed uh, surgery. So right. I thought, shit, this is not going to be good when I go to Australia because it's the best tacklers, they're the biggest guys, it's the best league in the world. It's like going to Real Madrid or... Yeah, yeah. You know... So I got, I got tightened up. Um, I had six months off. Um, I flew out there, skinny fat. I was skinny fat. I had a big belly and right. just loads of skinny body because I couldn't lift weights. Um, and all I was doing was eating. Turned up there, uh, got set up and just like, wow, looking around the place. I'm like, oh my God. Imagine turning up to Manchester United's facilities, right? Yeah, no, I can imagine. Yeah. Then meeting the players, then seeing the wealth and com- com- compared to a Northern English rugby yeah, yeah, yeah. team and I'm just like no wonder they're the best in the world and then the <laughs> adrenaline kicked in so I went back to what I did when I was a kid I was training before training training after training um, getting up in the middle of the night and eating food when I didn't need to to put on weight um, I got I did, I did my rehab I got over my injuries and by the end of the uh, the pre-season I'd impressed so much with just one hand the coach and the players like I was winning all the fitness tests I was <laughs> You know, if, if we went to a boxing session and everyone's fighting, I can't yeah. fight because I've got one hand, but I'm punching a bag with one hand. And, and so, and some credibility. Um, they chucked yeah. me in against the Brisbane, Brisbane Broncos in round 10. I played against the legends, Darren Lockyer. Yeah, um, but I remember him, yeah, Darren Lockyer, yeah. Yeah, um, what, Dwayne Webke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I won't, I won't go into the Australian legends because English people might not know them that much. But um, <laughs> so it was great. I played well, held me on. But the thing is, to come into the greatest competition in the world, um, it's going to be about ten to fifteen games 
to before just you get feel into your the way speed. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the, the, it, is, it is a step up, isn't it? You know, I, I've a lot of people have, have struggled with it. You know, I, I've forgotten his name, but I'm sure you remind me. But the, the fullback for Wigan who went over to... Um, yeah, that's it? right, yeah. I forgot yeah. his bloody name. Yeah, yeah um, he's gangly. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. He, 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 he really struggled as well when, when he went Loader. over. A, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of English lads go across there and literally they chewed up and spat back out. You know, yeah. so for people that don't know a lot about rugby, you know, it is a step up from the Super League, uh, and it always 100%. has been, and it always has yeah. been. Yep, and um, I believed if I, if I'd have got that consistency, but then it falls back to my injury. So, um, yeah. I had a collision with one of the biggest players in the world. He was six foot seven, and his name's Willie Mason. You can yeah, him. I've, I've seen Willie the Mason. fights. Well, that, yeah, that... yeah, the fights. That's the guy well, that bashed Field in that time. Yeah, I was going to say out, though, yeah. with, with regards to that, wasn't Adrian Morley at the Roosters when you were he there? Was, yeah, he was with me. Yeah, yeah. I was well, he can fight, him. can't he? Well, supposedly he can't. But <laughs> he's, 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 he's a mate of mine. Baron McDermott says he can't. But I love Adrian, and I never saw any fighting. But he's a killer. So right, yeah, yeah. That, I'm only going off Barry McDermott. So if Adrian, you see this, that doesn't my <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah, sorry, Adrian. God, Leave me alone. He, he can, mate, he's a monster. He can fight. He's a killer. Probably yeah. anyway. But I know the, Will, I know Willie day. Mason. I know Willie Mason. though, mate, I've I've seen him have punch yeah. ups with quite a few people. Um, yeah. Yeah, he dropped he, you at he, fielding like a bad habit, didn't he? <laughs> he did. He, 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 he come. He called me a pommy a pommy puff in the scrum. Uh, Right. So he was playing for Canterbury Bulldogs. And um, yeah. I was propping against him. He called me a pommy puff because he wanted to get at me like he did fielding. Yeah. And then he, he's like, fucking, uh, t- fucking have, a, have a crack at me. I'm coming, I'm coming. So he broke out the scrum and he's like, give me the ball. And he's, man, man he's yeah. massive. I, I'm weighing about 95 kilos. He's about 130, right? And six foot seven, maybe. We'll right? try and put a picture up on the screen at this point so people can see what Willie Mason looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he comes running at me. And I whacked him, so I'm, I'm, I'm fearless. Like, um, um, but because there's so much, I don't, I don't know. Something happened, and um, I fractured my spine. Right. I bulged three discs, and I had a stress fracture, um, and I could not, I could not bend down. I couldn't put my shoes on. I couldn't run. I couldn't do anything. And I went into about another three or four months of rehab. Then, and then the worst thing was to send me for a scan. Right. I did a full body scan. Shoulders are knackered, uh, damaged vertebrae in the neck from the whiplash. Right. And I had L5 missing. So I've right, gone down okay. an, inch, an inch in height. I've got bone on bone, and then I've got three protruding discs. Wow. Wow. So, so your body's battered then. Basically, yeah, Ricky Stewart got me in the, the room after about four months of rehab. I tried to come back and play reserve grade to get this fitness back up more more uh, injuries with the back and then they said look there's no chance in the world that you can play first team ever again oh there's wow. just no way no what way what was it like when it's... when them words hit because that's like a a thing for me you can never play first team again what yeah. was at that point were you like eh or were you like yeah. you just i bet it must have been mental no. i just started crying Cried and cried yeah. and cried. Rang one, rang one of the English mates who lived out in Australia at the time, and he's like, "No, you can do it." And I'm like, "You don't fucking understand. It's all over. I'm fucked." And uh, yeah. crying, and I'm like, "I'm only, I'm only 26." Um, so they, 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 they ripped up my contract and said they'd pay me out and look right. after me, set me up, which it did. Um, and then I just gave up. I gave up for the last four months of the year and went on a bender, <laughs> like <laughs> I, I regularly do. Went on a bender. Yeah. Brought some mates out from England. We're in penthouse on Bondi. Just don't give a fuck. Uh, I've got yeah. loads of money. Fuck it. Let's just go out on a bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that leads us, if you don't mind talking about it, into probably... Um, Depression. Rock, rock. Let's use the right word. Rock bottom. Yes. So for, for years and years, you've been climbing a mountain and you'd got to the top and you liked the view. And then mm. by no choice of your own, it went bump. And, and that's all that's always going to happen at and, any yeah. sport. There's one day. Yeah. And you had, and what's annoying, I, I would imagine, well, for me reading into it and looking into it is you're 26, 27, 28. This is when you are supposed to be on fire in your career to the point where this is your prime, you're the quickest, yeah. the strongest, the best mm. Mark Edmondson could mm. be at that point. I know. 
I know. And it was, and, and let's let's not beat around the bush. It was robbed from you. It was taken from you. And when it's not your own choice, it's bloody hard to deal with. So well, yeah, yeah. So tell tell us tell us what what it was like when literally your ass was on the floor. All right, I'll, I'll take you to the the point of suicide. So I'll go really fast. So I, I don't want to. I mean, I could talk to about every story for an hour. Yeah. Um, so uh, got loads of money. Uh, met an Australian girl. Um, we were in lust, I'd say, and um, she was young. I was fairly young. Um, and I'm like, I've got to go. So she's, I'll come with you. Um, went back to England and I, I got offered St. Helens on, I don't know why, but really shit money. And I'm like, how dare you? But they must have found out. How dare you? Just, how dare you? And then Wigan, Bradford <laughs> and Salford offered me fucking through the roof. Yeah. So I'm thinking, Wigan? I'm on my last. Wigan, Bradford, St. Helens. Oh, I Salford. wish you'd have gone. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, again, competition. I, I was thinking, I'm done. It's only right. a matter of time. So I wish I'd have gone back to Saints because we won two trophies that year. I'd have been a fortune. They could have looked after me. I might have, I uh, might have yeah. survived. But I went to Salford and it was like, oh, I've got to be careful. Any Salford fans watching? It was like back to amateur times. It really was. It was awful. Right, okay. It what, was, was that, awful from where, where I've come from. Just where the club was at in its point in career, it was undeveloped at that point, was it? Or was it just not it, not as... Prefer- I suppose, mate, when you've been playing up there and then you drop down, the standards of everything, from the food to the kitchens for the, the it, training it felt, facilities... It felt, like, it felt like going from more, uh, Manchester United to Morecambe. Right, okay. Let's just right. apologise to so, Morecambe fans as well. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I went back there, um, actually got over my injuries, got really fit. And, and right. uh, we started we started really having a crack at teams in the beginning, but then I broke my shoulder again. And oh. then I got a reoccurrence in my back and then they got relegated. And that was it. I was done. Right. And... Oh, oh, so I'm, I'm going to continue to suicide. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. suicide watch is coming. It's, it's, it's on the cards. So um, I retired 2008. And um, I had, luckily, my payments from, you know, the payouts and my contract. But I had multiple properties. Um, and my girlfriend at the time was really worried that we've got a baby now, we had a, we, you know, with a newborn. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a Porsche, I had an X5 BMW, multiple properties, but no rugby anymore. The, the money that we had in the bank... Uh, that I had in the bank was only going to last a certain amount of time. And um, I got a phone call one day from a bank manager. No, it was my accountant, one of the two. Um, Mark, the economy's crashed. And I'm like, what, what's an economy? I didn't know what an <laughs> economy was. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, he said, you've got to get your houses reevaluated because you're going to lose a lot in equity. But, but, but the foolish thing I did was my big lump sums of money throughout my career, I was trying to pay off my houses. So all my equity was in these houses. Ah, right, yeah. And then the prices dropped. And I went from, I can't tell you the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine, yeah. I lived, one of my houses worth 300 grand and I sold it for freaking 160, for God's sake. And I still thank you for that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you can imagine how much money I lost and I came out yeah. with zilch, like 18,000 yeah. out of a, a very lot. And I sold my furniture, I sold my cars. I had nothing, all my houses, because... In the future, I, I've never worked, so I didn't know where the next money was coming from. So the, the advice was get rid of all while you can. Yeah. So I'm wiped out. 12 years of playing professional, I'm wiped. My girlfriend, oh, 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 panicking. Oh, yeah. where's, where, where's her support in Australia with a family who've got a business, who's going to look after us? And I got the option to stay in England, be a coach, start again, but she's going with my baby. Ah, uh, right, yeah. Yeah. So not not only losing my identity now, I've lost my whole purpose in life and financial investments for 12 bloody years. Mm. I'm leaving my family and I'm leaving my fame and I'm leaving everything. And we arrived in Australia. It was like a holiday at first. I've got a tiny little bit of money and I'm very, um, I'm very, uh, I'm very, what's the word? Um, I'm, I'm very positive to bounce back, but I've yeah. never worked, never worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no qualifications. So I had to use the money to study three sports psychology diplomas, leadership, uh, sports psychology and hypnosis, sports psychology stuff, uh, personal training. Um, unfortunately, the relationship really fell 
into bad times with, with my ex whilst we're bringing up a baby, while she was not really working. I'm in Australia. I've lost everything. Yeah, you got your own personal shit torturing you at the it, same time. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see a way out. I couldn't afford a flight home if I if I, if, I, if I tried. Yeah, um, I did start personal training. It was miserable. Nothing was the stimulus of anything. The money was <laughs> just ridiculous. I'm working massive hours. Um, was I, I bet the money was all, I bet the money was all right, but compared to what you were earning, compared to like, compared to what you were earning as a rugby player. The drop yeah. down was massive, and you're like, if this is work, then I'm not. Do you get what I mean with that or not? Yeah, of course I do. I was working seven, six days a week from <laughs> half four in the morning till half seven at night, and I can only pay my rent, buy some food, pay the bills, and a phone bill. Right, ah, uh, right. I was living yeah, yeah. off porridge and honey and bananas, three, three meals a day. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I went out on my own uh, certain times. I'd take like a six pack of beers, go and sit on my own in the darkness on the beach, and once I got into drinking, I'd never, have a, never had a suicidal thought before ever in my life. And mm -hmm. never have I have while I've been sober. But the, I self-medicated. Yeah. I, I, there was nothing. I had no support, no nothing. And the drink was just numb. Numb it all, go to sleep. Yeah, it consumed and you. When I woke up with a hangover, nervous system's down. And then I'm a reminder of where I'm at and who I'm with and everything. And then I'm thinking, okay... I'm sorry, I've got. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't continue. Then I was contemplating for about ten minutes. How can I do it? How can I do it? Mm. And and then I was contemplating all the things, but I couldn't. I, I just couldn't do it. So um, I got over that. I bounced back. I remembered back to the you know the times from the Vale of Lure, getting the trial, working hard, being bullied. It was just the same. And then yeah. eventually, I I went for it, and um, I made it. I made it into the coaching side of things then. It's fantastic and stuff. And, you know, I appreciate you opening up like that because, you know, it, it's, it's not easy to talk about these things. And, and I guess, I guess you've made peace with yourself on that level. Hence why you can talk about it now and, and stuff and, 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 you know, revisit those times. Um, and, you know, I'd imagine there'll be a lot of people that will watch this video that when, when it gets to this part of the podcast, will will go, wow you know, I, wow, I never would have thought that. And, mm. you know, and it just goes to show that um, even when you reach the dizzy heights of being a, a world famous sports star, you know, it doesn't mean that your demons aren't going to follow you sometimes. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you came through it and, uh, and, you know, and you're the other side of the bridge now, which is, you know, it's great to hear. Um, yeah. yeah. Well done. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so before I go um, and to a point I'm really keen to talk about, which is the England coaching job in rugby union. Just before we leave rugby league behind, I just want to know, Mark, who who is the best player that you've ever played with, and the best player you ever played against? Please. Oh, oh that's ridiculous. I was thinking about this today. That is yeah. just ridiculous. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to push you into it, though. I want oh I want you to I want God. I want you to give us an answer. I want you to so tell me I, the. This is like someone playing for Manchester United and then playing for Real Madrid and saying who's the best, right? Yeah, well, it's still um, Cersei Dan or Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Give me a second. I've got a feeling who you might say uh, played with. Tell me, all right, tell me the first letter. S. No, not Sean Lang. All oh, right, okay, fair enough. No way, no right, way. Okay. Kieran Cunningham. Kieran, is the best, Kieran Cunningham. Is the best player you've ever played with. Yeah. Okay. Because honestly, people who are massive rugby fans, mate, who watch this... The, yeah. They want to know these things that who who the, yeah. so that that's a great oh. answer by the way. I mean, he, has he played has he played more games St. Helens than anyone? Yeah, I think so. And he, he scored a try in his last game, and he's got a statue outside the club. He's, he's five hundred games plus, I think. Uh, what? Yeah, what he, a legacy to best. leave. Yeah, he's yeah. the best. Who's um, the best player best you ever played? Australia. Who's the best you ever Sorry, played Tom. against? So it was on the opposition's team, where you thought, Christ, this guy's good. So I've got. You know, I've got Darren Lockyer. I've got all the Australian guys. I've got Willie Mason. I've got Sonny Bill Williams. Sonny Bill. Um, mm. Sonny Bill played against him. I've got... Uh, oh, oh, I did mention Mozza, but I'd still go for Kieran. Um, I've right. got Andy Farrell. I've got Jason Robinson, Martin O'Fire, Sean Edwards. I've got them all. Um, I would go for Jason Robinson. Did you ever play it? Just Jason, Jason Robinson. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. Billy Wiz. Billy Wiz. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mike, because I, I, like I said earlier, I was, when I was young, my uncle took me to watch Wigan versus Lee and they beat him 66 mm. nil. Uh, they beat him 66 yeah. nil. And that was a team of like Fran Obotica, uh, Gary mm. Connolly, Jason Robinson, Dennis Betts. Quigamala. 
Yeah. Well, there was a yeah. player. He was my uncle's favourite. I wonder if you ever played against him. He was called Dean Bell. No. Did you ever? Not, did you ever I, play? I know, yeah. Yeah. He, he played for Leeds. Yeah. I, it was just before uh, right. I started. But that, yeah, that's when I first got into rugby league back then, you know, and I was taken to Central Park and stuff to watch and things like that. Brilliant, and brilliant yeah, memories. Yeah, and like I said, Martin Afire got four tries that day, and one of, of them was course. a spin. One of them was a spinning. The last man, he spun him, and it was quite. Nice. Like, it was the first. It was the first ever like live sports game I ever got taken to, and like I said, I remember obviously the Wigan and St Helens rivalry was massive, wasn't it? You know what mm. I mean? The Good that, Friday that Central Park. Yeah, I, I made. I made my. <laughs> My second, I made my first start ever against Wigan, and Andy yeah. Farrell kicked me off kickoff. Me, and right. I got smashed. I was only nineteen, like piss wet through, <laughs> and that was at Central Park. And I'm just like, what yeah. the fuck is going on here? Oh my god, it was like yeah. a, a dream. Yeah. Well, thank you for the answers, by the way. Um, That's all right. Know, a lot of people will be interested to know. Um, so let's move on. Um, let's move on to uh, the last couple of questions, um, and obviously. A couple of years ago, you uh, you landed uh, a coaching role with England Rugby Union. Um, but as our viewers are about to find out, a dream that you thought was going to be paradise ended up turning very sour very quickly. Um, so would you like to uh, enlighten us on, on the experience? Mm. <laughs> if you'd rather not, I understand. All right, I'll, last go thing the, I'll, I'll go into the beginning. If, if anyone can see... It's it's just oh no, hold it there hold it there. Uh, I will be I England assistant. Yeah, I will be England assistant coach in the next three years, and that was written yep. in two thousand thirteen. Thirteen, brilliant, right? So yep. um, I, I come on for a three month trip. Um, I just worked for the NRL, which is the National Rugby League, which is the Sydney Roosters League, the Premiership yep, yep. over here. Um, dream time. Finished the end of my contract. Come on for a, a you know family visit. And I went to see my mate in, in London, who was the coach of Saracens. He used to play for England. He's got all the connections. And uh, I told him what I'm doing. And he's like, oh, mate, you've got to, you've just got to go into Twickenham and get an interview at least. Yeah. So I went into Twickenham. That's my pass. And as I arrived there, I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. yes. The mecca wow. of rugby union. <laughs> oh, my God. It was just glorious. And I thought, yeah, I belong here. So anyway. Um, went to <laughs> yeah, but I belong here, by the way. I belong here. I belong here. Uh, this uh, this guy that his name's on there, but I won't name it. He um, he interviewed me and said, "Look, we'd like to offer you something, but you'd have to work from the bottom upwards, the yeah, you know, yeah. the under 16s, 18s, because we want you to be a family member by the time you get to the first team. We can't just chuck you straight in the first team." Uh, but he offered me something, so I went back to my friends and I said, "Look, it was just wonderful to see and feel, hear this guy." And um, Alex, my, my one of my best mates, he said, um, "Well, I'm going to be the coach of England one day." So you fuck off back to Australia. And when I'm coach, I'll bring it back in. So I went, Fair enough. Yeah, so I went, let's do a pact. <laughs> so um, I said, I'm going to write a statement right now on that and I'm going to visualise and I'm going to read it every single day. And I wrote down, I will be England assistant coach in the next three years. And this was uh, in 2013. So I come back to Australia and I get more jobs and I'm working for my own business and stuff like that. And I'm reading it every day and I'm visualising, I'm feeling I'm there. I'm not going to go looking for it. I'm not going to go looking for it. I'm just going to prepare. Yeah. I'm going to study. I'm going to train athletes. And when that one day that phone call comes, I'm ready. So it's not coming. And it gets to the, you know, 2002, what did it say? Three years. So that's 2016. Got Nothing to the last year, really. And it got to 2018. And I'm sat on my balcony, happy as Larry on a Sunday afternoon, having a few wines with a few friends. And I get this email saying, Edmo, send me your, uh, your CV right effing now <laughs> and i'm like why what about Doesn't why now. send it send it so i sent my cv then i didn't know who for he wouldn't tell me this 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 australian guy that i know that i used to work for and um two days later my best mate in england's ringing me going what the fuck what the fuck's going on and i'm like what do you mean what's going on he goes eddie jones wants your telephone number right and I'm yeah. like, yeah, is that who Piss I sent off, my yeah. to? Yeah. So yeah. Um, passed my details on next minute. I'm on the phone to Eddie, interviews me, said he's heard so much about me. Um, we're looking for an English sports psychologist, performance coach that, that understands the players. Um, that, you know, the and you're like, that's, that's me. That's me. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here. here. I'm so, here. So I put the phone down. I lied on the floor and I'm just like yeah. kissing the... <laughs> to, God, to God. Anyway, next minute he, he books me a flight, flies me in for a personal interview. 
I probably met, I met up that photograph that I sent you the other day, yeah. me and you, outside the pub on a beautiful summer's yeah, night. Yeah, I think it was the Palatine. That was, when, that was the last day, that was the last day before I was going on. Yeah. After the interview, remember? Yeah. Yep. Anyway, yeah. that was a great ride. Um, so the interview, <laughs> I'm morning. I'm, I'm morning. Yeah. I was at Matt Fissy's the next morning. Yeah. yeah oh, right. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Matt will, um, Matt will so, appreciate you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe I just walked him home. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly so, what you did. Yep. So um, flew back to Australia. I had three months to sell everything. I had a, my, my Porsche. I had my lovely apartment. I had all my clients and I cancelled everything. I put all my eggs in one basket. And then I told my daughter that I'm going to have to leave. I don't know when I'm coming back. It's a really hard time. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I I just knew I was going to take him to the World Cup. I just knew it. He'd lost five games, Eddie Jones. Yeah. And they were coming up to the Autumn Series and need to have something impressive or he might lose his job. And I was determined to go in there and transform them players into monsters. And I believe I had... In effect, I'm not going to go into any more details. And the yeah. autumn series was wonderful. We won three out of four. We only lost to one point by New Zealand, who are the world's best. Were you present uh, on the bench yeah. or in, were you present in, or were you sort of in the changing rooms? Were you there on the games? Oh, or? Yeah, I'm pretty much everything. Changing rooms, coach, hotels, live, I live around them. Right, I'm, okay. I'm with them every day, day and night, 15 hour work days, three, or five, three to five meetings a day with the coaches, play it oh, It was just, it was massive. I was having travel from uh, Heesham to London every single week or wherever they were, they were based in Surrey or Oxford. Um, and it was going wonderful. It really, really was. Uh, um, were, they, were they all good lads? Yeah, all good lads. Rugby, you know, the, lovely, the yeah. Team. Uh, the, it, you know, I was talking about how uh, worldly Sydney Roosters were. Yeah. Um, this, was, this was worldly on a different level, finances, yeah. resources. Um, Eddie's really wonderful at getting the best in their department. Right, and okay, just, I've got you. Yeah. He just he just was small into shape, gets all fucking motivated and moving. Um, and uh, yeah, it was wonderful. It was my dream come true. I was close to Eddie in the in the in the boxes up at the top during game day. Then we go back into the change room, come back out, go back up. Mm -hmm. I was on the field in warm ups, everything, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it was it was wonderful. Yeah, right in the thick of things where you wanted to be as well. Yeah, because I've lived yeah. that life, so I understand yeah. them all. I'm looking for signs, any weaknesses, any anything I can write down as notes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So it was my dream come true. And, um, you know, I'd stay down there for weeks on end. And then I'd come back and see my family, see my friends, obviously, like I've, I've seen you. But um, are you, what are you wanting to, to know the end? Is that, is that, yeah, yeah well, I'll, I'll be, obviously, that, yeah. yeah, I hope I didn't say the wrong thing in it, in it turning no. sour. But obviously, essentially, yeah. it didn't go where you wanted. And I, I just... I know, obviously, we don't want to cause any legal issues with yeah, anybody, yeah. you know what I mean? So, you know, if you're comfortable just telling us, you know, what, what, how, how the wine that tasted so sweet turned sour. Well, I'm allowed my opinion and there's no yeah. legalities there. So Okay, um, that, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. Um, the dream that, that was, you know, so many years in the making and then to just give up everything and... I missed home so much. I missed my family. I missed my friends. I missed England. That was the greatest dream that I've ever, you know, ever wanted. And too many cooks in the kitchen. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. Right. Okay. And per if, 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 personalities if, if, that just went like that instead of like that. Uh, if I could tell you, I could operate <laughs> out of a 10 out of 10. And for whatever reason, I was operating out of a 2 out of 10 but still yeah. getting great results, still turning people into monsters. Uh, got a great story, but I'm not going to go into it about one player I, I, I had to change from here to there. Um, go on, drop the name. And, no, no, uh, no, 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 I definitely can't do it. Um, but um, I basically, over time of working there, realised this is not my dream. All right, it's good to be here. It's yeah. good to be here. Uh, I've proved I can... I can be in this environment. I can I can make change, but um, when there's such a busy schedule, and you go into an organisation, and your timeline is virtually nothing, it's yeah. just like, why am I here? I got nothing. I, yeah. I, I couldn't do. I, I couldn't present in front of the players, which yeah. I have to to get them all on the same page with the science of psychology, the science of you know what I'm teaching. So um, he brought he brought you in. He brought you in for that sort of purposes, but then was, I'm going to say it for you, was maybe too insecure to allow you access to be able to speak in front of them? 
no, it's nothing to care about anything. Um, <laughs> it was it, about no, anything. He, he, he's nothing to care about nothing. He's the greatest international coach of the, in the world, highest paid right. coach and second and third. Um, right, okay. He, <laughs> okay, sorry no, about that. Busy, I got that completely no, wrong. No, no, no. It's all right. There's a busy schedule and there's no time for anyone else. Right. If so anyone that's going to speak, it's fucking in. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I had to wait for players after training when they're exhausted and I'd get really shit time with them when they're falling asleep or after they've just eaten and they're falling asleep or right. go for a quick coffee with someone. That's not quality time for what I do. And, yeah. and then, um, yeah, I'm not going to go into it. So slowly I felt like I'm in an organisation that I can't live to my potential. You weren't and getting I, the satisfaction of job. Well, that's an interesting. Yes, I was. I, I loved them. I loved them no. all. I'd, I'd, I'd pretty much do it for free. But when I can't give them what I want, what I know will be unbelievable, and I'm being suppressed, it felt like, not because yes. personal suppression, it was because of the routine. They only had so many hours of the day and they had so many important areas to cover. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm wasting my time. That's right. all. It, this was nothing personal. It was just their days are so blocked out. They need rest. They need food. They need recovery, treatment, uh, extra skills, this and that. And it's just like, there's just no time. I don't know why I'm here, eventually. Right. Um, then we went to the Six Nations and we just, we just lost out on that one. And then we went into the World Cup prep. And the reason why I left was because I was slowly starting to get demotivated. Um, I didn't like being around loads of loads of opinions, everyone. Yeah. I, 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 was just, I was just starting to contemplate, I need to go back to Australia, you know, and work for myself and write a book. <laughs> write, write loads of books. I write a book. And do, on, do on like <laughs> online culture and just work for me. I don't actually like working with people, um, especially when there's egos involved and, and yeah. opinions which, and all which, sorts of... Which essentially there is at the highest everywhere. level of sport. Yeah. Everywhere, yes, of course. Um, and that just wasn't me. An entrepreneur... Is for themselves. Yeah. They, 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 they design, they create things, books, T-shirts, audios, you know, invest in stocks and shares, whatever. I'm an entrepreneur and I realised I don't want to be here. And then the last point when you probably saw me have a nervous breakdown virtually was... You didn't um, look in good shape. Oh, you didn't look in good shape, buddy. No, not for a while. Don't, don't say too much. Um, <laughs> don't worry, man, I won't. Just, just before we're about to finish the World Cup, uh, preparations to leave to uh, Japan and play in the World Cup. My grandma died right. on the Wednesday and um, it absolutely tore me to pieces because I've been 15 years in Australia and I've missed the quality last years of her life. Yeah. She got dementia in the last five years and she didn't know who the frig I was when I got yeah. to England. And I only got three opportunities to see her in, host in, in, in her home and she didn't know who she was calling me, Peter. Nice to meet you, Peter. You know, stuff like that. And she died, and I had to go to work to Italy. Yeah. And her funeral, her funeral was on the Tuesday. Uh, and I had to go to Italy on the Monday. Yeah, it sounds awful. Sounds awful. And I, and I walked out, and I never went back. And it was right. stress, and it was the loss, the loss of a you know, loved one. And there was only so many weeks left of my contract and my heart was dead. I had nothing more. Nothing so, left to give, yeah. Nothing left to give. And I made the right decision. You know, I rang them. I told them the situation. I'm saying, I'm sorry. This is something she wanted me to achieve, all my dreams. And when I remember her, before I left to Australia, my dream was to be successful so I could get back to her. I, I, mm. You know, she's the queen of my family now. You know, my mum's the queen, but she's the queen. And she was so pivotal in my life, paying for my tours, my rugby, my food, you know, as well as my, my gorgeous mom. They're like a little team. Yeah. Um, and when I thought she'd live for more years and at least I'd get to kiss her face, even if she didn't know I was. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because I'm going to London every bloody week and back and whatever, I lost my shit. And I never went back. And then I hit the booze. I was an absolute mess. And, I, and, then, and then, then I was like, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do now? My daughter's in Australia. I've got no home in Australia. I've sold my car. Yeah. I'm here with no job. Um, I don't want to work in sport again, really. And I melted. And what saved me was Norway. Can you remember when I went to Norway? Yeah, 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 yeah. A bit of a, yeah, a, a, a self-discovery mission. Yeah, I went and climbed mountains. Uh, one day I went to the top of this mountain after, you know, just drying out and uh, being with family. 
beautiful, lovely night. Uh, hiked to this massive top of mountain, spent the whole day there, and I visualized, I started all the way back from the beginning again. And the things I sent out there on that day are coming true now. Yeah, would you class that? I mean, I, I've wrote here, because I was going to just bring that up before we get onto the the, 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 the 10 questions I've got for you. Mm, and mm. I, I was thinking, oh. I, I've put bullet points on my paper, and on, around that area I've wrote <laughs> the rebuild. Yeah. Would you say that's exactly the right word to describe? Yeah, I know what to do. You know, yeah. I'm not going to stay in a crisis for too long. That yeah. was another point where I got suicidal thoughts. I really did. Right. But again, I, I, it was not. Yeah. It was not when I was so. It was not when I was sober. It was when I was recovering after a big weekend. Yeah, yeah. It's always then. And again, I was thinking, what am I going to do now? You know. Yeah. Um, so again, they crept in, but I got over that. So I went to Norway and I rebuilt it myself. I spent time in nature every day. I was I was running nearly marathons. Um, I was hiking. I was I was out, and my, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed your videos. You, you posted quite a few yeah, like videos from it, and it was I nice. did. You, you could you could see you could see that honestly, mate. You won't have been able to see it because you were making the videos. But every every day it went past a week, you could see you becoming yeah, more better. all right with yourself. I think yeah. I think you would try. I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but it seems like you would try to get back on a level par with yourself to go. I'm actually yeah. cool with myself again and make peace with yourself and go again. I, I, I was having fun and I was, yeah. I, I, I'm very, uh, you know, the banter, especially coming from where we're from, uh, we're from and then yeah. rugby banter. Um, I just wanted to have a laugh and I was on my own and I like doing videos and I love podcasts and I love yeah. this. And you good and, at it. You're good at it. Well, so are you. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's easy. It, we're easy, aren't we? This is what I love. And, yeah, and yeah. What, I wrote, what I wrote that day is I want to do documentaries in the future. I don't care what. My passion is DNA, history, ancestors, Vikings, um, motivational yeah, if, documentaries. If you don't know, by the way, me and Mark are actually Vikings. We Have, have you had your test? Got, have you had your we, test? No, but I'm just going to say I'm a Viking. Okay, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've had Cheers, Mark. But anyway, I'll finish this one. I'll yeah, finish this one. So yeah. I went to the... Uh, 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 Spending a day on your own at the top of a mountain where you can shout and no one can hear you. That was bloody great. Yeah. And I took a notepad and I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And I, I, I wrote down, who do I need to become? What do I need to do next? And what do I love? What's my next purpose now? And, it, and it's, I'm not saying never. I might go, if I'm offered a massive contract to go and work with England or a different country or something, all right, I might consider it, but it, it's got to be on my terms next time. I... I've got to be on my terms. It wasn't on my terms, but it was good enough and it was it was wonderful, but whatever. Um, I'm going to write books that change lost athletes' lives. I've been wow. there twice, suicide, and I've bounced back. And I've been from the, the bad upbringing, single parent, to becoming something. This book is going to go on a journey of my whole up, down, up, down, and up again. And if I can save lives through this book... Absolutely. Oh, it, I'm working on the title at the moment, The Lost Athlete or Lost or something. I don't know. I'm getting, it's, there's so many guys killing themselves. Girls, guys, Olympians going on the dole after they come out of the Olympics. Yeah. They want to kill themselves. There's athletes that have hung themselves here that played for Australia at Rugby Union. Yeah, it's tragic. Is it? it is. It's absolutely yeah. tragic what's happening. It's it everywhere. And it's a mental health issue. Yeah. And I'm going to write a book that's a Bible, that's a bloody Bible. And I'm going to dedicate my life, my happiness to the, to the results that I get out of writing that book. Well, it's got to earn money. It's got to earn money. It's just a part of it. But my happiness is going to be on the yeah, testimonials. Make sure when obviously you get the book, obviously I'd like a copy. And what would be great is in, a, you know, in, in several months time down the line or next year, when the book comes out, let's get you back on and we'll, we'll talk about the book and we'll, we'll give it a good promotion and, and, and talk about that. Oh, you can't, Oh, there you go. Your yeah, cam yeah your I mean, just, just went low battery, so that's a good, uh, uh, that's a good time. Right. So, listen, before we wrap up, I'm just going to whiz through uh, my Bernard Pivo questions. So, I always found this interesting on Inside the Actors Studio. I'm scared. Um, I'm scared. I've, I've yeah. read them. And my answer, if my mum watches, will be horrified, but I don't oh, care. Oh, Christ. Yeah, well... As you know, um, we've done this twice already with uh, with Matt Fisselthwaite and, of course, um, our second guest, which is John right. Fisher, the Gary Ball tribute. I, I, so I apologise <laughs> what I'm going to say. <laughs> hey, listen, I, it's you that says it, not me. So let's let's fly through them. OK, so question number one, what is your favourite word? Um, favourite word? Oh, I didn't think about that one. Um, <laughs> favourite word? Oh, well, it comes to, like, your third question, curse word. Probably fuck. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> fuck, That's fuck, your favourite word. Fuck, fuck, fuck. 
Oh, well, was... there you go. Number two, what is your least favourite word? C-U-N-T. Yeah. Do you know something? My mum, when she watches this, she'll go, well done, Mark. I wish more mm. people would speak up for that word. Yeah. Uh, so well done with that one, mate. It's huge she... over here. She won't yeah, like yeah. this next one. She won't All like right. Fair. Number three, what turns you on? A hairy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it does. <laughs> one minute, one minute. Uh, I, not, I, I was hoping that question would bring, <laughs> like, and this has been the same theme all the way through. I was hoping that question would bring things like, um, what turns you on? People go, when someone's really enthusiastic about the work, or that's what yeah. I was kind of hoping that yeah. answer would bring. But no. fair enough, a hairy pussy. 100%. Right, okay. So, when I say what turns you off, is it a similar theme but without any hair? <laughs> a shaven pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry oh, if your kids are in the room. I'm but then, ag- no, but then, no ag- but else. then again, on my YouTube channel, it just say it's not suitable for children. So there you go. Oh, um, okay, so what sound do? You- oh, here we go. What sound do we do you love? Moaning. What? As a, in lady, sec- a lady. A oh. lady moaning. <laughs> <laughs> This it's really the best sound in the world. I thought it would. Okay, I don't know. I've never had that, so I wouldn't know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> usually, oh, I, usually it's like, have you finished yet? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what sound do you hate? Don't say men moaning. <laughs> yeah, that'd be weird. Uh, screaming, so, screaming. Uh, yeah, you know, like kid, kids screaming. I've got yeah. a pool here next to my, my balcony and screams all day does me head in. Right, fair enough. High pitch screams. That, yeah. that's, kind of, that's kind of a, uh, I think it's going to be a regular answer to that question. So, um, yeah. okay, what, what's your favourite curse word? Fuck. Fuck, yeah, yeah, fair enough, mate. Um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, a musician in an orchestra, like... Oh, what instrument since, would you play? Um... Probably violin. I can imagine you with the old... Yeah. Not that yeah, it makes I'm that obs- noise, but... I'm obsessed in the psychology and how they become one with the... You know, I use it as a metaphor a lot in my coaching about not being conscious of what you're doing, how they're just... They're automatic, uh, they are. Yeah, at, at one I mean? with it, yeah. Yeah, I agree yeah, with you. they close their eyes. They don't even need to concentrate. It's just automatic, yeah. yeah. All That's the, like all playing sport. Ah, oh, fantastic. That's, That's good to know that, actually. Um, so what profession would you like to, uh, to attempt? You obviously, you just said, uh, musician, uh, what yep. profession would you not like to attempt or you look at and think, any, Oh Christ, I couldn't do that. Any nine to five job working for anyone. They can all fuck off. No, it, I'd rather be on the doll. I'm never working a nine to five <laughs> in my life. Fair enough. Um, so I bet you're a good crack at parties when Dolly Parton comes on. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this off now. Get it. <laughs> yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Um, okay, um, and the last question is, if heaven exists, uh, what would you like to hear God say as you arrived at the pearly gates? Yeah, this is a good one. I like Matt Fiss's answer, but I'm going to elaborate on it a little bit. So he's like, as I'm entering, he's like, you're pain free. You're pain free. Everything's, everything's fine. You're back to like your youth as a kid. Your strongest and point you're gonna- in your life, yeah. Yep, you're gonna you're gonna meet all your loved ones, all your ancestors, and you stay here as long as as far as you want to go back. They're, they're all here. They're all here. Oh, whoever's died in your lineage before yeah. you, you, you can stay here as long as you want. But you're gonna meet them. You're gonna drink with them. You're gonna eat with them. It's all just gonna be love and hugs. And you meet, you can go as far far as you can back. Yeah. But when you decide you've had enough and it's great and you've you know reconnected, then we're gonna transform you into the spirit of anyone that you choose on the planet, a plant, an animal, another human being, or you could be the voice for a psychic. You can help someone. You can, you can go and be an angel, angel right. for someone that's living in your family. That's, that's what I want. Well, and I'll be like, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of hoped you'd have thought about this more. <laughs> <laughs> great answer, mate. Great answer. Uh, listen, uh, we have, this has been the longest podcast I've done. And you know what? It's gone so quick, Mark. Um, I look forward to seeing you again um, on your return to the UK. Um, I don't think I can travel for a while because, as you know, I've got twins arriving very shortly. Hey, um, that's one of my dreams as well. I want twins. Well, you're you blessed. never know, mate. You're blessed. 
You're absolutely if they, blessed, mate. If these end up doing me, I didn't. You can have them. <laughs> if, I, if I if I could give all my sporting career for twins, I would yeah. be I would be tempted, mate. Well, listen, I know you. Uh, we've become a bit closer over the last four years since we met, and um, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that at some point I'd like Mark Edmondson to have a an impression on my twins as they grow up. So um, it's been great getting oh, to know. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely, mate. You, you're a diamond lad. You, you're a local lad. And, you know, you're highly thought of. I really appreciate um, your time giving it up um, to come on this podcast in, in its early infant days. Um, it's been great to hear some of your stories. And before we wrap up uh, and let you go, uh, just a very quick question, and then we'll, we'll bring it to an end. You spent some time with Usain Bolt, the fastest man on the planet. What was that yeah. like? Oh, that was crazy. <laughs> um, um, just before I signed for England, um, again, the agent that got me the England job, he said, um, again, send your CV in. Uh, there's a football club in, in Sydney that are doing a trial for Usain Bolt, and we would love you to come in and help him with his progression, transition. Yeah. I'm in. I'm fucking in. <laughs> yeah. So I spent one or two weeks. Um, they gave me the rule. Do you know what I was talking about? I didn't get the rule to do what I want. Yeah. With England, with England. Um, I went in there and I, uh, for I've done over a thousand lectures, right, for yeah. in front of big bosses of everything. But this was you saying, right? So I remember I flew in and I stayed the night in a hotel, and then the next morning the coaches and stuff were all in the coaches' room. And all the players, when they're going to the changing rooms, they come in and shake the coach's hand. Yeah. And in, in walks in Usain. He's <laughs> massive. He's like six foot six. He's like a bodybuilder. <laughs> and he's like a little timid six foot giant. And he's shaking yeah. everyone's hand. And when I shook his hand, I'm looking at him and I'm saying to myself, don't be a fan. Don't be a fan. Act, yeah. Act cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. So I'm acting all tough. And um, I spent a wonderful week with them in every single training session, watching them, eating with them. And then I got my lectures. So the first lecture was on about uh, what I bring to the table, my past, what I'm, you know, what I'm wanting to do with the players. And Usain had to sit on the front row, didn't he? Right yeah, yeah, in yeah, front yeah. of me. And I'm thinking, I'm talking about the champion mindset here, right? Uh, and I know... <laughs> To the world right. record holder who's to reached the, the top of it. The great, no, the icon. Yeah, the, the great, icon. The, probably no, the greatest no Olympian. Compares, no yeah. one compares to him in any sport. And anyway, he's, he's like this. Yeah. He's like that. I've got pictures. I've got pictures. And you can see him. He's just staring at me and I'm like, this is so fucking off-putting. Yeah, yeah, Anyway, yeah. Um, I was talking about the champion mindset, but um, I, I spoke to his agent who's, who's with him everywhere he goes. I'm a great mate. And um, he was saying that, you saying from a young age was so physically gifted. Yeah. He nearly brought the world record when he was like 16 or 18. And from then he was just like, oh, I'm just going to put in a bit of a performance here and there and train here and there and I'll just kill it. And he did. So the things I was saying to him was like, might not be relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it did, it did to the other guys because they're not as blessed as him, but I just felt so awkward. And just before I walked in the room, I had a panic attack and I had to go to the toilet, look at myself in the mirror and go, hold yourself together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, um, he ended up, um, we did two uh, presentations. Uh, I had one-on-ones with all the, lots of the players and him. Yeah. Um, I hung out with him, you know, people come up and I saw the fame and people coming for autographs and he's chatting with him and laughing. And, um, great guy, got a picture on one of his first games. Uh, he scored a few goals, but unfortunately... Yeah. It just wasn't good skills, enough, was he? Yeah. No, it, his skills laterally, he's the fastest in it, straightforward, but he's good, but he'd need he'd need about 12 to 18 months, the coach was saying, and they haven't got the money yeah, and the yeah. time. No, so I, I get think that. that he, you know, it was it was wonderful. Um, yeah, what a great experience, yeah. great experience and stuff like that. Um, well, like I said, Mark, when you get this book finished, um, we will have you back on and we'll talk. We'll talk, you know, the next podcast we have you on, we'll talk more about the time that, you know, with working with UFC, to, you know, Usain Bolt. Oh, more God, in, yeah. More, more in depth. We'll talk about that on the next one you're uh, back on with us about yeah. the book and yeah. stories. This one, you know, we try to touch on the rugby side of things and the mental side of things. But listen, thank you so much. What you don't know possibly at home is we're in the UK, Mark's in Australia. Um, so it's been great to have, you know, a chat from one side of the world to do that. Um, Mark Edmondson, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I wish you all the best with your future and the book. And I'm looking forward to reading it. You take care and I'll see you uh, when you come back over. 
My pleasure. And uh, keep up the good work. Love you, Paul. I'll, I'll do my best. You too, mate. You too. Hey.